jealous, actually. And I thought, if I had a name like yours, my life would have been different because I could have done more outrageous things than I actually ended up doing. So I thought, well, here's this, here's this fabulous name, Rosie Fernandez. You know, it has so much elegance and spark. And then I just sat down and wrote your poem. If I had a name like Rosie Fernandez, I would wear gardenias and orchids in my hair. I would buy some hot sauce called Jump and Kiss Me. I would offer it to strangers. I would know how to tango. I would sing anywhere. I would tap dance on sidewalks. I would fall in love insistently, spend hours in cafes with a broken heart and good coffee. Oh, if I had a name of Rosie Fernandez, I would know it. Holy... <laughs> okay, poet Wendy Morton is so inspired by your name, Rosie Fernandez, even the way she says it. Rosie Fernandez. <laughs> How did it make you feel knowing that another woman, Wendy Morton, was so enamored and taken by the, the name that you loathed? It, it was really surprising. It really made me rethink my name. <laughs> it made me think, wait, is there something I'm not getting here? <laughs> Why? Why are you dancing on the table? <laughs> yeah, it was really surprising. So, Wendy pens this poem, an ode to you. How did it go over? It was a huge success. And in fact, Wendy calls it her legacy poem because it just connects with so many people. She reads it at the end of her poetry reading. This is the one she presents. She brings it to workshops and asks students to write poems called If I Had a Name Like. And she carries the poem around in her wallet on her checkbook so that if she meets someone and introduces herself as a poet, she says, and these, this is one of my poems. And she reads the Rosie Fernandez poem. So for Wendy, this is the poem of her career. And I asked her why she thinks this poem was such a big hit. Because people get it immediately. Because everybody has these lovely longings to be somebody else or to have another name that would allow them to, you know, tap dance on sidewalks or by jump up and kiss me hot sauce and offer it to strangers. I want to do things that are daring. I don't want to be afraid anymore. And that's what this poem is about, isn't it? About not being afraid anymore. So your name, Rosie Fernandez, unleashes incredible bravery and risk-taking for Wendy Morton. Yes, which is surprising. I don't consider myself that much of a risk-taker. <laughs> but I guess having another name allows you that space to be someone else. That's what she's seeing all over your name. Yeah. Yeah. That, which is funny. I don't see that. So that would happen. So then Wendy published the poem, and then she posted it on her official poet's website, and there it was discovered by graphic designer Laura Wills. She was working with Southbrook Vineyards there in Niagara, Ontario, and they're in a little boutique organic vineyard, and they have an exclusive line of wines called the Poetica Series, and the idea was to put poems on the labels of the wine. So uh, Laura, it was up to Laura to find these poems. So I did a, a, a big study, actually. It, was, it took me a, a long time. I sat down for hours, really, and days, and read poems. And, you know, I'd finished reading, you know, some B.P. Nichols, some Ann Carson, some Margaret Atwood, you know, some serious heavyweights. And then I encountered a woman who had never heard of, Wendy Morton. And this poem, if I had a name like Rosie Fernandez, and I started reading it, and I can remember just this smile breaking out of my face and thinking, that's perfect. You almost clap your hands in glee when you read that poem. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, we need to have this on the label. Rosie, you are the only human being I know whose name is on a fancy bottle of wine. Yes, and it's even a famous wine label. It was featured in a book called The Art of the Wine Label, which I still have to get the book. <laughs> it looks at influential modern wine labels all over the world, and there's a whole page dedicated to the If I Had a Name Like Rosie Fernandez wine label. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, and um, Bill Riddle 
Meyer, owner's husband, and his wife Marilyn. They told me that the wine was a bestseller for them. And partly was because of the story behind the poem. I loved the poem right from the beginning. It's an informal poem, and it brings me to tears literally every time I, I read the poetry. It's the most personal, and it's, it's such a beautiful sentiment. It says, don't take yourself too seriously. And some of the lines in it, I, I, I still quote. Problem is that halfway through, I usually choke up a little bit because it. I know it sounds weird, but it it resonates with me. The thing is, I never particularly liked my name. But why didn't you like Rosie Fernandez? I just kind of had that feeling I never really liked it. Then I started to think, why didn't I actually like it? And I think it is because the next question invariably was, where are you from? Right. And it's like all of a sudden, boom, I'm not part of the group anymore. I'm right. from somewhere else and I have to tell them, even though I was born in Kitchener like the rest of them. <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, that's the Canadian experience now. Yeah. But at the time when you're a kid. Well, as a kid, the, the thing we want more than anything else is to not be different. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. This is what I'm so impressed about, you know, how this whole the poem has had its own life. Yeah. Is that when Wendy said, you know, I think you need to come and like your name. There was no who are you, where are you from, it was just, I like the name, and the poem is just, I like the name. Yeah. And so it's like, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a name like Rosie Fernandez, I would wear very naked orchids in my hair. I would buy some hot sauce. I hot sauce called Jump Up and Kiss Me. I would offer it to strangers. If I had a name like Rosie Fernandez, I would know, I would know how to tango. I would sing anywhere. I would tap dance on sidewalks. I would fall in love insistently. Spend hours in ca- spend hours in cafes with a broken heart and good coffee. Oh, if I had a name like Rosie Fernandez, I would know it. So dramatic. When you hear everyone's interpretation in what they see and feel in your name. How does it make you feel? It really makes me think that a name can have so many different connotations for different people. Um, people can see different things in the same thing. So it's, um, it's it's interesting how everyone connects to it, but everyone sees something a little differently. Because for Wendy, it's about not being afraid. For Bill, it was not taking yourself too seriously. For me, it's like, hey, your name can just be accepted as a name. And it can just be appreciated for just how it sounds and what it, it is without your personal history attached to it. So there's something new there for everyone, just for a name. Yeah, and I mean, for the kid who grew up in Kitchener, who was kind of embarrassed about kind of being Spanish and not fitting in, knowing that it elicited such inspiration for all these people, does it, how has it changed the way you feel about your own name? It makes me like my name more. It really does. There's there have been times I thought, oh, maybe I should take my husband's last name. Maybe I should change it. I should. But now I'm like, no, it, it is a good name, darn it. <laughs> It just made me appreciate it in a different way. And does it inspire you to dance on tables, or are you like, hey, no, it's my name? Oh, no, I'm, I'm Spanish. I do flamenco dancing. Yes, that's <laughs> hey, uh, dancing on tables is acceptable. <laughs> Done. That's a given. That's a Thank given. you so much, Rosie. Thank you. That is the HF producer, Rosie Fernandez. Also, the name is Fine Wine. A photo of Rosie, both Rosie Fernandez and back by visiting our website, cbc.ca slash cnto. And hey, if you are like Rosie and you have an incredible story of how you grew to love your own name, call our listener line, won't you? 1-866-630-3686. You're listening to the NTO on CBC Radio 1. Today's show is all about the story behind the name. Now a song by a Calgary singer-songwriter who not only changed their name at the age of 19, but these days is refusing to conform to gender expectations, so prefers to be referred to by the pronoun they. Here's Ray Spoon with I Will Be a Wall. Hide the children, hide the children, hide the children, so it's coming, I will be a wall, I will be a wall, hide the children. 
children, hide the children, hide the children. A storm is coming, I will be a wall. I will be a wall. There are Alina Vileskin, and then 